You don't feel um, hunger anymore because you feel that God is in your presence and in your heart. And this is what sustain you in, in fasting from, thunder, from dawn to sunset. It's our awareness that we are frail and sinful and weak creatures. And uh, it's some way to come in touch with that. One of the chief reasons for fasting in Hinduism has to do with a spiritual cleansing of the inner self as opposed to physical cleansing. This is a prerequisite uh, for us getting involved in our ritualistic worship. Uh, in so much that um, even during the course of the week, Hindus observe special days of fasting for a particular deity that they worship during the course of their lives. The custom is as ancient as religion itself and equally universal. This month, followers of two major religions prescribe fasting. It's Ash Wednesday. Only the rumble of traffic and the sounds of rustling, falling leaves break the silence in this church. The hand of temperance, self-reflection, cleansing of body and mind has fallen on Christians worldwide. The season of Lent has begun. Here in Trinidad and Tobago, fasting brings an abrupt halt to the raucous sensuality of carnival. It's a sharp contrast to mindless pleasure. It tames the animal in us and brings out our deeper thinking human selves. The methods may differ. It is almost dusk. We are about to witness the breaking of the fast, followed by the dua or prayers, a ritual followed by Muslims worldwide in the holy month of Ramadan. Muslims go by the book. From sundown to sunset, not a drop of water or morsel of food must pass their lips. They are forbidden sexual contact. Look, this is the vazu, the ritual washing of the body, accompanied by prayers. The sun has set. Time to eat and share food with the needy. A call for prayer. Men and women assemble separately. Only children and the ill are exempt, but they all try. The difference between the fasting of the Muslim and the fasting of the other faiths is that here it is an injunction which is obligatory and has to be performed every year, observed every year, um, as it is one of the five fundamental principles of Islam. We are liberated from the laws. We, in a certain sense, we must become lawless, but not in the sense of not observing the laws, but going beyond the laws at the heart of what the law is about. And we do that by being like Jesus, our relation to Jesus as Christianity is a religion centered around the person of Jesus, not around a Bible or a book. Those who fast will tell you that by about three o'clock in the afternoon, they get slight hunger pains in the first few days. Now, this is to empathize with those people who do not eat, who are perpetually hung hungry, and who are in a state of semi-starvation. And God wants you to react to that. Uh, doing without sugar in your coffee in the morning. Little, little, small little things that you can control. And maybe learning to control areas that are in your power of control, you will also draw strength and encouragement to try controlling areas which you find very difficult to control. But all religions agree on one thing. Fasting is considered in the Hindu religion as a soul cleansing process. And uh, this is why I do not believe it differs from any other religion. One man took fasting beyond religion. He made it into a form of silent protest. During India's fight for independence, Mahatma Gandhi battled guns with starving himself. Fasting became a very potent weapon in the hands of Mahatma Gandhi. And initially when it was started, there was a, there was a feeling that it's a futile instrument. But by 1947, when India attained independence, it did prove to be a very potent weapon. And we see this form of non-violent protest even today. Take parliamentarian Subhash Pandey. 
if he's sincere, that's a good thing, because he's using a period where Christians and Muslims are called to fast, and he is showing his identity with it, he's identifying with it in solidarity with it. Many of us don't fast, but a tradition which cultivates empathy and encourages us to become better people has obviously today become a human necessity. Ira Mathur, TV6 News, with a special report.